Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and today I'm bringing you four brand new Dollar Tree DIYs. Let's kick it off with this first one, a love you to pieces puzzle sign. This one might look complicated, but it was actually really simple to make, and I know that you can make it too. Here's everything that you'll need to complete this project. The first part of this DIY is the most time consuming one and it is taking apart a puzzle. This is one that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's an Ariel Disney one as you can tell and actually after I opened it I did complete the puzzle over the weekend before then kind of destroying it and I created four different shades of red, pink, white and almost like a magenta one. Originally, I was going to use that sheet of cardboard that I just showed you to create a heart that looks like this, but then I was at the Dollar Tree and this heart was exactly what I needed and I knew it would be more sturdy than the cardboard and just a lot easier. If you've ever tried to cut cardboard, you know that stuff is really hard to cut. So I peeled off this uh, love sign. I thought that it would come off a lot nicer than it did and I can use it for a future project, but it didn't really. I saved it just in case, but it kind of had some residue left. And again, this project is so simple. It is just time consuming. Painting all of the puzzle pieces it did take me about two episodes of a Netflix show, but once that was done, assembling it was pretty easy. I picked up this puzzle saver from the crafter square section and you can see me reading the label because I couldn't find the ingredients and I didn't really know what this was. I liked that when I opened it, it had this like stopper. I don't even know what you would call this uh, spatula and you were able to smear it on. I was trying to figure out how this was different than Mod Podge. And the only real difference that I saw is that it was very, very glossy. Whereas Mod Podge, well, you can buy a glossy one, but also a matte one. And the one thing that I really liked about it was that it was clear. Mod Podge kind of has like a milky white look to it and it does dry clear, but every once in a while you'll have a bubble or something where the Mod Podge doesn't dry clear. So I think that if you see this puzzle saver at your Dollar Tree, you should pick it up. It's also a much larger bottle and you're gonna get more than what you would in that smaller Mod Podge jar that the Dollar Tree sells. And right now I am just creating a base layer I don't know why, but I was very scared that I was going to run out of puzzle pieces about halfway through. So I put them very sparingly down and spoiler alert, I ended up with a lot of extra puzzle pieces to use in other DIYs. So the 500 puzzle piece is definitely more than enough to cover this sign. And this part, again, it's really easy. It just kind of takes a long time. Put on some YouTube, put on a favorite show, and just go in and put down all your puzzle pieces. I did leave it for an hour. That's what the bottle said to say. And then I just kept layering it up. So adding on more of that puzzle saver glue and adding more puzzle pieces. I ended up doing about three layers and that looked like this. So once that was all dry, I am going to be adding my arrow sign that says love you to pieces. I picked up this wood arrow from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting off the rope that it came with, but I will be using that later. And first things first, we are going to paint this arrow white. I am using my go-to, my Waverly white chalk paint. And then once the arrow was completely painted, of course, I couldn't just leave it white. If you know me, I like to distress everything. So I went in with a chip brush from Apple Barrel, as well as my go-to dark brown shade from Apple Barrel. It's called, I believe, Cypress Umber or Burnt Umber, something with an umber. And it is my go-to dark brown color. It's the darkest brown they make. So if you're in Walmart, or a craft store, you'll know which one to pick up. And I'm just kind of dirtying up those edges so it adds a bit of definition. And then I went ahead and used some vinyl to say, love you to pieces, but you could also freehand this or use some letter stickers. And there was a little bit of white space at the end of the arrow. So I grabbed one of these wood hearts, of course, shocking from the Dollar Tree and added that to the end of the arrow before grabbing my hot glue and hot gluing the arrow down at an angle on top of our puzzle piece heart. The final step was adding the piece of rope that came with the arrow from earlier and just hot gluing that down to the back of my puzzle piece heart.
My next DIY is a Love Lives Here wood house. I saw a similar version of this that the Dollar Tree was selling, but never had it in stock at my store, so I had to make my own. Here's what you need to make it. As you can tell, this wood house is from Christmas. I picked it up when they have all of their Christmas stuff on sale for 50 cents at the Dollar Tree, and I am completely deconstructing it. Now they do have a house currently out for Valentine's Day that I believe says love on it. And then they also have one if your store already has Easter stuff in stock, they do have one for Easter. So we're just gonna be using the back of this. So whichever one that you find is going to work. I took off the roof part of the house and then I just flipped it over and I am painting it white, not paying too much attention to again where the roof is because we're going to be covering that and just getting a good opaque base coat. Then I picked up these heart toothpicks, mostly because I thought they'd be cute little coffee stirrers for in my kitchen to have during Valentine's Day. But at first I thought that I could use this as the hearts coming out of the chimney, but they were a little bit too small, but I did utilize the toothpick portion of it and I dipped them in a dark gray color. So you can see that they are not their natural wood color anymore. And then I have these larger wood hearts from the Dollar Tree that came in a pack and I am using two red and a pink one and trying to measure out exactly what length I want them to be coming out of the chimney. And it didn't work, the roof wouldn't lay flat if I put them on that side. So I had to flip the sign over, hot glue them to the back, and then I had a nice flat surface to re-hot glue down the roof section of my house. This part you could totally freehand, but I already had my vinyl out from the previous project. So I went ahead and cut out two windows. Again, you can draw them or you can use the stickers too. Then for the door, I just took a piece of cardboard and cut it into a square. And I'm using this shade. I've loved using it for Valentine's Day. It's called Berry Red by Apple Barrel. And I think it's a really pretty, but not too intense red color. Then I went ahead and also put down Love Lives Here, another thing that you could freehand or use sticker letters for. And the heart that I took from the toothpick didn't go to waste. I used that as a little doorknob on the door. And to make this a stand-up sign, I hot glued two tumbling tower blocks or Jenga blocks to the back of the house so that it would stand up. I had my first attempt at shabby chic DIYs last week and I was feeling a little inspired and kind of let it flow over into this DIY for this week. Here's everything that you need to recreate this. Similar to the last DIY, I am taking a house not from this season. This was out, of course, during the summertime and I knew that I would use it for something. At first, I thought that I could peel off the mermaid saying, but unfortunately I couldn't. It was coming out in pieces. So I just painted over the entire thing using my white Waverly chalk paint. Now I am creating a buffalo check very similar to what I did last week. I absolutely loved the way that it came out, except this time I'm going to use very muted pale tones of pink. So I am laying down the tape first in this vertical way and I'm using a little piece of tape as a spacer. It's just a really nice way. You don't have to measure, break out that measuring tape and make sure that everything's perfect. It acts as a really nice spacer. I will also link above the video from next week. I explained this process in a little bit more detail. I have really been loving creating my own buffalo check. I tried it for the first time this summer and really liked the process. It was so fun at the end to peel off all the tape and see your buffalo check creation. So the pale pink color that I'm using in this DIY, I've used in a couple this week and last week. It's called Seashell Pink by Folk Art, and I really love it. I think it came out so perfect in all of the Valentine's Day DIYs. 
Then I peeled off my tape. I don't let it dry on the first go around. So I just peeled it off and now we're gonna be working horizontal. You're doing the exact same thing, except this time horizontal. And you are going to be using the exact same color. So you're not switching up color shades. I'm going to be going in again with that seashell pink color, just painting this time horizontally. Also this time, do not remove the painter's tape. We are going to leave that on and let this dry. After that layer of paint has fully dried, we are going to go back in with another layer of painter's tape. And this time we are going to be going over the base square. So whatever color you started off with, usually that's going to be white and it is in this case. You can't really see it in the video with the lighting, but it is a lot more visible in person. So I'm just going over again vertically over those white squares. And this time I took the shade watermelon and mixed it with a little bit of black paint to kind of have this muted mauve color. And I'm going over that and letting it completely dry. And then when I revealed it, the pink and white buffalo check was complete. I absolutely love the way that this came out. Next, we're moving on to the true centerpiece of this DIY. And it is using the wood hearts from the Dollar Tree. They come out with these wood hearts every single year. They are always something that you can rely on them coming back in stock with. And I just took a wet paper towel and some brown stain and stained the heart. I still wanted it to have that wood look to it, but just a little bit darker than the natural state. Now I am experimenting with two different types of lacy ribbons. I wanted it to wrap around one side of the heart and then just kind of be left free flowing and the other side. So I'm just playing around with how I wanted these pieces of lace to go across. And once I figured that out, I went ahead and added a little bit of hot glue. You have to be careful with the lace because the hot glue comes through the little holes in it. And then because I wanted it to look like it was wrapping around, I flipped it over and hot glued it to the back. For the little rosebud that I added to this, the Dollar Tree came out with their foam roses. And I'm not gonna lie, when I saw them in stores, I wasn't sure if they were supposed to be a little kid craft or if I could actually make them look nice in a DIY. But by adding the little pieces of boxwood to the petals, I think it came out really good. And I hope that it doesn't look like a little kid's DIY. I actually really liked how the foam roses came out. I saw that this year the Dollar Tree came out with a Valentine's Day book stack, but unfortunately I couldn't find it in any of my stores. So once again, I had to make my own. Here's what you need to recreate this. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys knew about the Dollar Tree wood crate hack. All that you have to do is take one of the wood crates from the Dollar Tree, paint it, and then flip it upside down, and suddenly it looks like a book stack. I went ahead and added some Valentine's Day buzzwords and a little felt heart from the Dollar Tree. And this ribbon I actually picked up in the fall and never touched it, but I was really glad that I had it. I trimmed it down and kind of frayed the edges to make it look a bit worn and wrapped that around the side of my book stack. I love making these book stacks for lots of different holidays. I usually decorate my mantle for each big holiday. So for this one, I am actually just going to be using a bit of duct tape to hold my ribbon in place. It's a good hack because if you use temporary vinyl and duct tape, you can change it out for all of the seasons. And I complemented it with some heart bead garland that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.